8.3, writing exponential equations from a table or a graph. Our objective is today is to write exponential equations from either a graph that's given to us with values or the table, which, yeah, I just butchered that. From a graph, meaning visually, and a table, which just has values. There we go. Let's continue. If I can, there we go. The exponential form. What was that? Um, uh, we did two days of it now. Oh, yeah. Y equals A times the quantity of B to the X power. Remember, this is your Y intercept. This is your scale factor. Scale. Scale, that's right. Factor, which also is known as the R value. To write an exponential, all you need is these two things. That's it. So we'll talk about how you can calculate the common ratio when we're given a table or a graph. We'll look at finding that value because that can be a little tough, but we're just looking at what's being multiplied. So then we might use some math like division to find that out. Here we go. Write the equation from a table. So we're given this beautiful table, and we need to write the equation the exponential equation. We got to get it in this form right here. So we want to first find our y-intercept. Well, what's our y-intercept? That's when the x value is zero. Oh, look, there it is. That a value is going to be one. Cool. Halfway there. Awesome. Now we get to find the b value. So what you're looking at is what you're multiplying from here to get to here, or what you're multiplying from here to get to here, or what you're multiplying from here to get to here. So what you could do is work backwards, meaning this. So if I want to find my scale factor, I want to take a number, let's say like 0.5, and I want to divide it by its previous number of 0.25. If I did that math, I would get a value of 2. But let's try that again with two different values and see if it changes. Let's go from 2 and then 1. So what is 2 divided by 1? 2. So what's our scale factor? 2. So then now we have our equation, y equals 1 parentheses 2 to the x power. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Let's try another. Write the equation from this table. So again, we want to get it into that beautiful form y equals a times b to the x power. So first find your y-intercept. Well, what's my y-intercept here? My a value per se. Well, again, it's where x is equal to 0. So that means it is, oh, look, 16. So a equals 16. Now find my ratio, which is b, the same way we found it before, by taking one number that's in front and dividing it by its previous number. So what is 8 divided by 4? 2. Let's just try it again to make sure it's real. Let's do 32 and divide it by 16, its previous number. And we get 2. So there we go. We have our A value and our B value. So now just plug it in. Y equals 16 times the quantity of 2 to the X power. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am, a second time. Oh, guess what? I think it's your time to shine. Oh, no, we'll do one more. I mean, do we have another one like this? Do we? Yeah, we do. So I'll have you do four on your own. Let's do three, though. We'll do three. This time, because it's a little bit, the value's going to change because it looks like this one is going down on my Y value. So I think this is a decay, which we probably should have went back and talked about how these are increasing or because your B value is a two, that this is a growth. B value is greater than 1. Growth. But this one, I believe, will be a decay. But let's find out. Again, we want to get it in this form. So we got to find our y-intercept first. That's a horrible y. It looks like an x. There we go. Y-intercept, which is really just our a value. What's that going to be? Well, it's where x is 0. So it looks like it's going to be a 6. Halfway there. Now get the rest. So now we got to get, of course, our scale factor, our B value. Always take the number and divide it by its previous number. So 18 over 54. Going to need a calculator for this one because I don't know what that is on top of my head. 
nor do I want to think that hard since it is Friday for me because I'm doing this on Friday. I get 0.333, which I believe is one third as a fraction. Or you could approximate that to 0.33. But let's double check it and do two more. Let's do six and divide it by two divided by six. There we go. Which that does reduce down to one third, which is approximately 0.33. So you can write your equation two ways. Y equals six parentheses one third to the X power. Or I can write Y equals six parentheses 0.33. 3 to the x power. Either or would be acceptable. And since the b value, our ratio, the scale factor, is between 0 and 1, we call this decay. And we can kind of see that these values are going downhill, which means they are decaying. So like I said, number 4, yours to do, go ahead Make me proud and try this on your own. Pause this video, please. Here's a quick equation for number four. We have y equals 25 times one half to the x power, or we can have y equals 25 times 0.5 to the x power. Again, one half and 0.5 are the same, one being a decimal, one being a fraction. All right, now look at a graph. Can be a little bit more difficult, but we can definitely get it done. So, again, we want to get it in this form. So we want to find our y-intercept first. Want to graph, that's easy. It's where it crosses the y-axis, which looks like right here. So what's that value? 4. So there's your a value. 4, like golfers say. Or sometimes a golfer might say, square root of 16. If you don't get that, it's okay. Now find your ratio, your b value. We're going to need some other values in order to do this. So I'm going to look in here and see where some nice points for my y values are. Looks like right here, I got a 2. And if I go down, I got a what here? A 1. So let's go ahead and just look at the change right here. So again, you're taking the previous value of 1, and you're going to divide it by its or you're going to take the value of 1 and divide it by its previous value, which is 2. So what does 1 over 2 give you? Well, it's still just 1 half. So really, I mean, that's all we can do on this one. We're done. Y equals 4 parentheses 1 half to the x power. Or again, you could write that 1 half as a decimal as 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 to the x power. Either or would be acceptable. Now let's go ahead and try another number two. Here it is, same idea, write the equation of this graph. Again, we want it in this form because that is our form for exponential functions. So let's get our y-intercept first. There it is, it's a one. That means a is a one. Now we just gotta find our scale factor, which is b. What are we multiplying by? Well, we're definitely increasing here. You saw we were decreasing here. So this was definitely a decay. And even our scale factor of 1 half indicated that it was a decay. So we're expecting this scale factor to be greater than 1. So we got to get some other points. So again, here's a good point right here for 2. And then here's a good point right here for 4. So let's take the previous, or take 2. No, the, the, that's right. Take uh, 4 and divide it by its previous value, 2. So it would be 4 over 2, which gives me 2. There's our scale factor. There's our a value. Put them all together. You get y equals 1 parentheses 2 to the x power. Or really, it's just y equals 2 to the x power. And you can put this in parentheses if it makes you happier. So there you go. Another graph done. Number 3. Do we have number 4? Yeah, we do have number 4. Cool. I'll do one more with you. Actually, you know what? You know what? You got three and four in your own. Because you know, I know you can do it. I just know you can. So I'm going to pause the video right now, which means you better pause the video so you can try this one out. So pause this video, please, and try to get the equation for this. So we found our A value being our y-intercept of four right here. That was easy. 
to get the scale factor, there's only one other good point, and that was this one right here where across the nice good values, 1, 1 is the point actually. And so we had to take this 1, and we're going to divide it by its previous y value, which was 4, which is what I did right here, which is still 1 fourth, which is also 0 0.25 as a decimal. And then we just took our A and B values that we have them, plugged them in, and got our equations. And again, this graph is going downhill, which means it's decreasing, or we also say it's decaying. Number four, yours to do, go ahead, shine, make me proud. Pause the video, please. Now, pause. So for this one, we found our y-intercept to be a positive one, which was our a value. Then we found another point that was really good on this graph right here, which was 1, 3. So we looked at the y value of 3 divided by its previous good y value of 1. So 3 over 1 got us to be just 3 for our scale factor. Plugged it into the formula, which is the general form for all exponential functions, and we have our equation. And since the graph is going uphill and the scale factor is greater than 1, we have a growth. Now identifying key features. I believe we got two of these. Yes, we do. So I'm going to do number one for you, and you can do number two. So example one, the equation A equals 700 times the quantity of 1.09 to the fifth power is being used to calculate money in an account. All they're asking us is just what each value represents. So again, it helps if you write down that beautiful exponential function. So let's go ahead and let's write out what each represents. What does the 7 represent? Well, the 700 is my A value, which is my starting amount. So we can say the starting balance in the account is $700. What does the 1.09 represent? Well, this represents the growth factor. And I said growth factor because it's greater than 1. So this represents the growth factor, increasing in money. So we're growing. And what does the 5 represent? And actually, that is the growth factor. And we actually have a growth factor, and it's actually, and I'm going to put this here, of 9%. And how we get that 9% is really actually a good question. I'm glad you asked that. So how we actually get the 9% is that we're assuming that this is the amount that we are increasing by, 1.09. So if we want to get the 9% here that we are increasing by, and are we increasing by that? Hold on one second. All right, I think I got my, my thoughts back with me here. So this represents a growth factor of 9% because when we're looking at 1.09, we know that this value right here, is our B value, and it's greater than 1. So we understand it is a growth factor. And so since it's being greater than 1, we want to know how much bigger than 1 it is. So if I take 1.09 and just subtract 1 from it, I get 0 0.09. So then we want to make that into a percentage by timesing it by 100, and we get 9%. So we're increasing or growing by 9%. Okay, and I'm going to show you the next one I'm actually going to do it for you because that one is a decay problem, and I want you to understand how you get your decay factor. So that's how you get your growth factor of 9%. So if this was like 0.15, then it'll be 1.15, it'll be 15% growth factor. Okay, that's how that works. So if you have questions, please do raise your hand on that. Okay, it can be tricky, but can be easy to learn. What does the 5 represent? Well, that 5 was way up here. In exponent. That's, of course, our time. We don't know what the time the units are. We don't know if it's years or months or days. So we're going to say that the 5 represents the time um, in the account. The, the amount of time. There we go. The amount of time the money stays, or the money in the account. This is the amount of time. Because, uh, yeah, because. We don't know if it's months or years or whatever. So that would just be perfect right there. It represents the amount of time. Now, if we had units, we can say what time, but we don't. Moving on to example number two. The equation A equals 250 times the quantity of 0 0.75 to the A power is being used to calculate money in your account. Well, I'll tell you right now, if this was being used to calculate money in your account, well, that's not good. 
because this value right here, which is my B value, my scale factor, which is this guy right here, is actually less than one. That means it's decaying, which means you're losing money. So definitely don't want to have an account that's losing money. Maybe this person's pulling money out. That's probably why. That's all I can think of. So again, what does the 250 represent? Well, the 250 is your A value. That's your starting amount. So the starting amount in the account, I can write in the, is $250. What does the 0.75 represent? Well, it represents that we are decaying. And the reason is, again, this is your B value, your growth or decay factor. Since it is between 0 and 1, this is a decay. So we are losing money here. So to find out what percentage you are losing money, we first start off again with the 100%, or just known as 1. So if it's decay, this is what you do. You take 1 minus that value for B to get your decay factor, which would be 0.25. Of course, times that by 100 to get the percentage of 25%. So now we can say that we are the decay factor. Our account is decaying at 25%. So let's just write decay factor is 25%. I like that. The decay factor of 25% I can get a percent sign means we are losing money. Yep, we're decreasing in money now. What does the 8 represent? Well, the same as before. That 8, the time, the amount of time. There we go. I said that last time, the amount of time. There we go. So, again, if you need help, again, have any questions on how we got the 25% here, or the 9% here from when we grew, please raise your hand now. Let us come and help you so then when you go into the Google Slides, you understand how they get those values as well as when you take the quiz today. Other than that, that is a lesson. Thank you and have a blessed day.